if you ask me the one thing you should do to become a better composer, I would definitely say improve your music notation. One of the most useful skills that I learned as a composer was making your sheet music look good. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Carlos. I'm a composer and music student based in Chicago. And on this channel, we explore how to lead more productive lives as composers and musicians. Today, I'm discussing this monster of a book, Behind Bars by Elan Gould. And it is essentially the Bible of music notation. And I'm gonna be discussing the different benefits of improving your music notation. And you can skip to the different timestamps in the video if you wish. So as a composer, why would you ever care about how your music looks? You know, isn't it more important how it sounds compared to how it looks? And obviously it's still really important to have music that sounds good. But this used to be my mindset as a beginning composer. But after picking up this book and listening to the testimonials of other composers, reading this book has utterly changed the game for me in terms of improving my compositions. Now to really understand the importance of good music notation, you have to view it through the eyes of a performer. Good versus bad notation can mean the difference between a good and really bad performance, even if it's a fantastic player. So that's why I invited Avery, a fantastic trumpet player that's going to sight read some music excerpts that I made with varying levels of music notation quality. Hi, I'm Avery Herman. I am a senior in high school and I play trumpet. I have an Instagram account, uh, averys.trumpet, where I post practice videos and performance videos and all kinds of stuff like that and talk about trumpety things. Uh, and then I'm also in the Naperville Youth Symphony Orchestra and the Chicago Youth Symphony Jazz Band. And I have participated in ILMEA District 1 the past couple of years, and this year I was actually principal in District 1, but we didn't get to perform because there's a virus going around, if you haven't heard. Uh, so that was a, a bummer, but... Some of the examples I wrote were nearly perfect and written correctly, while some were utter garbage. But just remember, if the music sounds fine through the MIDI playback on Sibelius or Finale or MuseScore, it doesn't mean that the player can actually read that. So even if the player is proficient at their instrument, depending how you actually write the music down on paper has an enormous impact on the performance. on this one. I don't know, this one was actually fairly easy to sight read. I like that it specified specific articulations, that's always nice. Um, the slurs were really clean and they kind of stuck to where the notes were barred, um, so that makes it really easy to keep time, especially when you're sight reading. I wasn't using a metronome, so it made it uh, a lot easier for me to keep time on that one. So, move on to excerpt number two. <laughs> this one's kind of scaring me taking a look at it. focus with everything all over the place with this one. Um, to start off, the barring was horrible. <laughs> the 16th notes were not barred together. Um, the 8th notes were barred really weird, where there'd be like a group of three that didn't really make any musical sense, and the slurs uh, kind of didn't align with what I thought the phrasing was. Um, and then there's also this breath mark in the middle of a slur, um, and sometimes those larger slurs can mean like legato tongue, um, or slur all together, so the breath mark makes that really unclear. And then with the rests in, I believe, the fourth measure. Um, I There's just no reason to have that many rests and it kind of messed me up um, counting-wise. Excerpt number three. Um, we're gonna give this a try. It looks a little bit better than the last. Um, Phrasing-wise, just looking at it, I can't really tell where the phrases are, but <laughs> we're gonna give it our best shot. All right. <laughs> So the first thing that I'm noticing here is the ritardando is in a really weird spot where I couldn't really tell exactly 
where I'm supposed to be um, putting that retardano in there, so I didn't even think about that when I was playing. There was kind of more direction in terms of um, dynamics and crescendos and stuff and kind of following the line where it was headed. You know, not bad. I don't know. The retardando was the most confusing thing out of all of it. So now, excerpt number four. Scaring me right off the bat. I have no idea what's going on here. <laughs> uh, taking a look at it. Naturally, with those uh, triplets, I sped up because it kind of looks like a cadenza almost to me. Um, and I kind of read that crescendo is like an energetic crescendo, but yeah, I didn't even play those legato because I was not paying attention to the legato since it was on top. Uh, the slur in the beginning also was getting me. I slurred all the notes together, but it could have been a phrasing line, but I wasn't really sure. Uh, again, the eighth notes, separated, not barred, made it really hard to tell what was going on with the phrasing there. Uh, the little, um, breath mark there coming after the rest is, was hard on me because I like to think ahead. Um, I like to, the minute I end a note, be able to take a breath if I need one, and I didn't really notice that until a little bit later. Excessive rests, um, here in the third measure were a little bit distracting, um, but... Yeah, I hope I hope that was helpful. <laughs> After seeing how massively the performance was impacted by good versus bad notation, it's really easy to see why you should seek out to improve it. And this naturally begs the question, what if I don't want to improve my music notation and my music just looks mediocre or even bad? Avery mentioned how much more difficult the music was to sight read, the worse the notation was. And if you deliver sheet music that doesn't really look good, you are sending a signal that you're kind of sloppy and you're not that professional. Overall, it just sends a message that you really don't care about your work. Some performers won't even perform your work if your music is poorly written notation-wise. Now, anecdotally, I've experienced the importance of music notation. At the Illinois Allstate Festival this past January, a band director that was part of the judging panel for the contest actually came up to me in person it told me how much better my music notation was than my other competition. And I didn't really think too much of it. I've had this book behind bars for quite some time and I used it for making my score that I submitted to the contest. And it felt really good getting a compliment from one of the judges that just my music looked really good and I attribute that all to improving my notational skills. So if you want to be treated more seriously as a composer, even if you're young in your career like me, then I think improving your notation is the number one thing you should do that's within your control. This fantastic book behind bars is essentially a reference guide and it's organized categorically and it gives the best practices, suggestions, and examples of what good music notation looks like. Even the most specific details of notation are explained here, like the horizontal alignment of tempo text. All these little things will just add up and the appearance of your score will just skyrocket in quality. And this can lead further down the line to commissions, performances, etc. Now this isn't the type of book that you should be reading cover to cover, but you should keep it handy on your bookshelf in case you want to look up a particular notational issue. Even just perusing some of the pages for 10 minutes, you'll gain so much valuable information that will just throw you over the top of the competition. So if this hasn't convinced you yet, go ahead and pick up Behind Bars through the link in the description and Amazon will give me a small kickback, so thank you for supporting me. Now just to quickly illustrate the effect this book has had on me and my compositional skills, I'm going to show you a picture of a score that I took before reading this book, which was about a year ago, and one of the recently composed scores today. And you can just see the big differences in the quality and really my compositional skill arguably hasn't changed that much within a year. And even just improving my notation of skills, the quality just seems so much better and I really think this will just have a huge impact on the quality of your work and it will be perceived differently from others. And you can just see how massively I improved in just a short amount of time after using this book. And I implore you, if you want to improve your craft and become a composing legend, then you should definitely think about notation and it should be on the forefront of your mind. 
and I sincerely believe that you will be transformed just by improving this one aspect of your compositional skills. If you enjoyed this video on improving your notational skills to become a better composer, then I have a composing career playlist that has videos on how to earn money as a composer and how to get performed and such. And I really think you'll find those invaluable to your self-improvement as a composer. Anyways guys, thanks for watching and keep writing.